session. Welcome back to Court is in Session, brought to you by the Caps on Sports Podcast. I'm Anthony Mano. I'm joined alongside Nick Tobias. Nick, what it do? I don't know, man. Celtics aren't doing too hot, but the basketball has been good. The basketball has been good. There's been a lot of – there's been – I don't know if it's surprising necessarily, but there's been a lot of offense in these It's been games, surprising. In these, in these it's been surprising. Been I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm very surprised. Yeah. Well, you know what it is? Like, I don't want to say, like, the conditioning has been poor because these guys have come in and they've looked, like, phenomenal, right? Like, they've – physically, they've looked good, right? Nobody's well, phys- come in. Physically, and, everybody looks the same. Right. Which nobody's is a- come and, – and the conditioning will come as, you know, the games are played. That's why we're playing these games, right? But nobody came in, like, you know, overweight or, you know, really drastic other than Jokic, but it doesn't look like it really affected him. He's been playing, you know, as well as ever. But – um Skinny Jokic, boys. I think Reference episode one. I think there's a lot of um, I think there's a lot of benefits to these to these uh, shooters, you know, to, to the to the offensive side of the ball because like it's different lighting, so I feel like everything looks brighter. You know what I mean? And the depth perception is better because you're not looking, you know, twelve rows deep. It's different. Fans. It's it's got that gym look, and it does. you know, you see those videos of the stars in the gym, and they just don't yeah. miss. Well, even they the centers, miss. too. Even the centers are, like, draining. Like, Mitchell Robinson and Andre Drummond, like, are, are two that, like, always come to mind, like, hitting threes in the gym, and then they never do it in a game because it's just different. Um, but in the miss. bubble, these guys are, are putting up num- these guys are putting up numbers. Like, teams are putting up offensive uh, you know, powerhouses. Um, speaking of offensive powerhouses, uh, the Brooklyn Nets have beaten the Milwaukee Bucks it's third in our docket, but I'm moving it up to number one because it's near and dear to my heart. Um, the Nets, man, led by Timothy Luau Cabarro. We balled. We made it interesting at the end because it's a Nets game and it wouldn't be interesting if we didn't, but we won the game. Did Giannis play the second half? No. Did Chris Middleton play the second half? No. Did we win anyways? Yes. Thoughts? Nothing? I have I, – I, they sat Giannis and Middleton in the second half. Yeah, they sat Giannis because Justin Anderson made him his son. Justin Anderson was like, I am the Greek father now. But if the, game, don't, your if the, games, if the game doesn't mean anything for him, why they sit him out? Why they sit him out if the game doesn't mean anything? Yeah. So, so, if, if, so, so whatever his name, dunked on Giannis. Justin Anderson. Put some respect on his name. Okay, so you say it's just they sat him because they didn't want him to get hurt. The game means right. nothing. So yeah, they, the game means the game means nothing to them, but the game means a lot to the Nets. The Nets have to win as many games as they as they can in here. Yes, Unless it's a good, and, it's and, a and good that, win. Right? Yeah, and and the the dudes on the Nets bench, or in this case the starting lineup, are a lot worse than the dudes on the Bucks. Right. So it was a good win. Listen, it was it was a hard fought it's, game. It's nice because it's it's good to see the Milwaukee Bucks lose a basketball game. So I can't right, really yeah. complain well, too much know, about proves, that. Yeah, but um, they're not going to be playing with like you know extended minutes for DJ Wilson, who looked like an absolute zero on the court. But that's that's okay. Um, also from that game, Jamal Crawford made his long anticipated NBA return, and he looked Dick crossover. He looked decent. He um. He looked he looked like he was moving well. He was moving the ball real well. I think he finished with like five points and like three assists in in like moving real well. Play. Moving real well. Yeah, he he was moving real well until he took a handoff, um, you know, in a play action and kind of I think he jammed his uh, his hamstring a little bit. And he uh, hobbled off the court uh, under his own weight, pretty much. But um, the the little glimpse of Jamal Crawford that we got proves that he still has it, right? Listen, He's... the basketball fan in me likes to see likes to see him out on the court. Mm-hmm. But he's also playing from the Brooklyn Nets, and that's the only interest that he's got. Right. And it's because they're missing their right. whole entire basketball team. So that also right. got to show you something, right? Well, you know, I wouldn't even be surprised if he's on this team next year, right? Like just the connections that he has around the league, and the guy's still a bucket, right? Like he still scores the basketball. If he's a zero on defense, or if he's less than zero on defense, if he's a net negative on defense, like no amount of offense is going to live up to that. But if you come in a game for ten minutes, light up the scoreboard if you can, 
if you get hot, phenomenal. If you stink, like, peace, you know? Well, he's in a good situation because he can easily stink and it's fine because the Nets are pretty bad. Right, right and now, yeah. And if he's yeah. great, he's great and it's good. Mm-hmm. But well, he, doesn't, good. Fit nice he doesn't, doesn't fit on that team next year. He doesn't fit on that team. I think it's like a third guard and a guy that will get spot minutes in garbage time games and is a locker room leader. Like, yeah, why not? If he's going to take the he lead minimum, why not? He wants to play. Uh, probably. So does everyone until they realize that their value at that point and the guy 40 years old is uh, – I don't want to play. I'm fine sitting here watching it. That's a good point. Fair. I don't think you could play. Um, no. No, I could not. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to our Next second up. point, we got uh, the second NBA bubble for teams like the Knicks and the Bulls, uh, et cetera. Probably isn't going to happen. Right, <coughs> they uh, they've said it's really Which it unlikely. shouldn't. Right, it, it shouldn't. Right, That's stupid. Mm-hmm. Do I want to see the Knicks play basketball? Absolutely not. No. Do I want to see the Chicago Bulls play? Absolutely not. The crappy Warriors team? Absolutely not. Right. So these guys, you know, it, for for the players though, it is to to get in and get a little run in. But if they want to get a little run in, like call up your buddies and, and and play. If they want to play, like it doesn't have to be in a bubble environment, but they can, you know, go and do it safely. I'm sure. Like in the summer, we see the videos, like the Chris Brickley videos in the gym, where nine. But what kind of rush are they in too? Like, right. it, yeah. it, what's the big deal if they're not playing? Mm-hmm. Right. I just think it's proposed as like an opportunity for more basketball to be on the screen for guys to get kind of looks and obviously the money that comes with it. But the logistics of a second NBA bubble, especially with the first one going on, I don't think it's very feasible. Which brings us to the next point. There is zero positive tests in the bubble for this round, which is phenomenal news. It proves that, uh, it proves that this this stuff is working, right? Where the the bubble is is work like these guys are taking the necessary precautions to to keep themselves safe, right? Where you know you see other leagues like baseball, it's kind of you know a, not a free for all, but organized chaos we can say, right? No, did I did I lose you? No, you're still there. I was, I was uh, going back and forth for a little bit. Oh, are you good? Did you get? Did you hear any of that? Yeah. Okay. I heard half of it, but okay. I kind of got the gist of what you were saying. I mean, okay. how successful the bubble is and <laughs> whatever. And it, it's true. Like, no, no team has really tested positive. Nobody's tested positive since the end of July, you know, from July couple of weeks no one's tested positive so it's actually mm-hmm. good to know that it's um you know that it's at least working when we talk about baseball and how poor of a job it's doing there um football i'm nervous for we always see how college football is working out a lot of you know we're getting play, more and more players opting out mm-hmm. um yeah it's just it's it's just tough you know it, it's it, tough logistics I, 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 go ahead i don't know what they're gonna do i don't know what they're gonna do you know it's it's everything's up in the air right now you know everyone's trying to make the best with what they have um Mm -hmm. the nba clearly has something working but i think it's tough to get all these other sports to easy because you can easily play on a court um you know obviously on the ice and it's easy just to have one of them or two of them and just rotate through Mm -hmm. you know football's not easy uh baseball's not easy um there's a big you need big you know a big big area you know maybe places like a you know, like when we went to Cooperstown and like Diamond Nation and stuff like that, I guess maybe you could finagle something like that, but still, it's not right. easy. Right. Um, I think it's a lot tougher to get together than two basketball courts in a mm-hmm. gym. Um, but especially it's when Disney I'm has happy. the facilities that they have, right? And the, the capability. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think it's not just Disney, but like all the. Every, it's so easy to just put together two gyms in an arena. You know, mm-hmm. two courts in an arena. You know, get a couple hotels and, around and lock it and down. And to that point, you know, like, if they to do play baseball, you're going to need more right. than two baseball fields. Mm-hmm. Unless you're going to be playing baseball all day, but there's a little more in between to like rake the fields and and that kind of stuff, right? But I think it. I think the bubble is like very obviously yeah. working. And if they have to do this next year, I don't think getting 
eight more teams in is that big of a deal logistically, right? At, from, at face value, right? There's obviously more to like, hey, can I get my family in this? Can I get this, that, and the other thing? you know, in here, I think family for most of these guys is probably the big, uh, the big caveat. Cause you can, you can go for a couple months and you know, like, Hey, we're going to win a championship by wife, by kids, peace. Um, mm-hmm. but I think it's a little different if you're gone the entire season, um, and have to do that, but we'll, we'll see it's, but, uh, zero positive tests in the bubble this round. That's stuff we like to hear. All right, what, do we got, what do we got up next? Let's talk about Carmelo Anthony because he is flat out balling. He looks good. Yeah, Melo looks great. Man, he lost me. Uh, I bet on the Grizzlies that game when, he, when, they, when <laughs> they played against the Blazers. And, you know, Melo's hitting those two corner threes. Like mm-hmm. he's, you know, turning back the clock. Um, he looks great. And I think it's – I get this gym style a, uh, AAU game is perfect for – for Melo's game, you know, shooting and getting a little ISO, uh, you know, jump uh, running out to the corner, getting a corner three. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it just works perfectly for Melo. And it's nice to see him balling, especially, you know, us being growing up watching Melo play. It's good to see him balling. Moving on from Melo to another certified bucket getter. We got Tevin Booker hits a mid range shot yesterday to beat the Clippers, the Suns beating the Clippers. Who would have thought? Well, he hit that turnaround fadeaway. First of all, he Kawhi should never. He should have. And Paul George. I don't think anybody gets made. I don't think anybody gets more game winners made on them than Paul George. I don't know if it's just because he's always guarding dudes, and they just yeah. are lucking out and they whatever. And they I don't him. know what it is either. But that's, it's always him, dude. It's always Paul that, George. He's always he's always getting. He's, he's always on the wrong side of that game. Right. right? It's ridiculous. Um, but Booker, man, talk about yeah. a bucket getter. You're yeah, not wrong when you talk about a certified stud. bucket getter, man, because, wow. He's an baller. absolute stud. Absolute stud. It, and that, it shouldn't have even have gotten to him in the first place, right? Like, the ball just kind of – I mean, if Aka Zubak – uh, got the rebound, tried to kick it out when he could have probably just held it and got fouled and shot two free throws and yeah. maybe made one. And then it's a three point game, hard, whatever. Um, but no, he got the rebound and just tried to throw it like he was scared. I, I think he legitimately got scared and threw the ball away, and it ended up in Devin Booker's hands. And Devin Booker made the most of it and, and made the made the game winner. So it's good to see Devin Booker hitting game-winning shots in, in big games when, when his team isn't, like, 2-25. and 25. All right, so moving on from, uh, from Devin Booker's game winner, we got some little bit of injuries uh, that, we, uh, that we need to touch on here. Pat Bev with a thigh injury. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's, it's more like a precautionary kind of thing to kind of pull him out. Uh, the one I'm kind of uh, – looking at is is Goran Dragic with an ankle injury they labeled it as just a sprain x-rays came back negative but we know how ankle injuries are right like he got hurt against the Celtics uh, I believe so yeah where um that's a, shame. that's a shame for him you know it's 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 tough for ankle injuries to to to, to kind of heal the right way because you don't play it I mean you're on them all the all the freaking time especially <laughs> when you're playing right as a so, basketball player yeah, yeah for basketball yeah so and Goran Dragic is an important part of that team, right? Like, he's the sixth man. He was my sixth man of the year. Um, and he plays a crucial role on that team. Yeah, especially because Kendrick Dunn – Kendrick Dunn – Kendrick Nunn is in Combining a, Chris Dunn and yes, Kendrick yes, Nunn? Okay, yes, to make fine. Kendrick Dunn. I, I mean, you. both of them are equal. Well, you know what? You know what if, Listen, if, they, neither of them can make a jump shot, so it doesn't matter. If you gave Kendrick Nunn Chris Dunn's defensive ability, he'd be a top 10 point guard in the league. So the thing the with du- Chris Kendrick Nunn, Nunn does Chris, play defense. Chris Nunn can't really shoot the basketball. And that's yeah, and Lawrence Kendrick Roger Nunn plays in. no defense. So put them together and you got a pretty decent NBA player. Yeah, so get this Goran Dragic one, I guess. <laughs> it, it is pretty big. I mean, they sat Jimmy Butler in that game against the Celtics too. Um, but that was more just precautionary just to kind of make sure he's rested because he's obviously – um, you know, the best player and one of their biggest investments on that mm-hmm. team. Um, but I think Drache, it's going to be 
it's going to be tough because they don't want to force him back. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would you want to force him back right away? But they need him. But at the same time, what, they have another three, four games before, you know, the playoffs start, mm -hmm. you know, before they really have to kind of get going. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be I, interesting to see. Yeah. All right, we got the big one that we alluded to earlier. We got a Jaron Jackson Jr. meniscus tear. This oh, sucks. My, this my. is bad, right? It's, this is just, you know, I, I, I've been high on the Grizzlies all year, um, especially going into this playoffs and going into next year. And Jaron Jackson was a balling. I mean, the first mm -hmm. game against Portland, I think he put up around 20, 30 points. Um, you know, last week against um, – who they play? They played the Pelicans last their, their last game or before today because I think they played today. Um, before they played today, they played the Pelicans, and he balled out. Um, you know, he's he's turned to a multi-level scorer. He can shoot the three. He can mm -hmm. post up. He can shoot the mid-range. Um, he handles the ball. He takes the ball up the court. He plays great defense. Uh, he, you know, he was a pretty he was an underrated candidate I think for most player uh, most improved player. Um, I also think he gets over. He got overshadowed by Ja a little bit, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, very crucial part to that team, that offense, that defense, that chemistry. It's sad to see him go. Um, and I don't know what the Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies outlook is looking for that number eight seed now. I mean, that's a crucial yeah, part. Ja can't do it all by himself. Watching those right. games, I'm watching Dylan Brooks taking these shots that he shouldn't be taking because he's right. not making them. Dylan Brooks is 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 a is a tough uh, tough player to watch because when he's on, like he's on, you know. what I mean, he's like one of those yeah. like you get that dude in the heat check and he's going to to drain everything. But there are also times where he's uh, he's gonna, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I don't really know. Um, I don't really know what's gonna happen, but. Mm -hmm. uh. Well, I mean, Jaron Jackson Jr. goes down and it's the next guy up, except that next guy is Gorgie Jang, right? And if it's well, not no, Georgie, well, I mean, it's B. Clark. I mean, right, it's Brandon it's Clark, Clark and Anthony Tolliver, right? So Brandon yeah. Clark is going to have the opportunity to to prove himself. Which I hope he does from a developmental standpoint. Um, you know, maybe he doesn't prove to be that that piece that keeps them in the playoff race, but maybe he mm -hmm. proves to be. Well, maybe he's good enough to to to. You know, listen. You put you put Jared right? well, Jackson had a at the five. You put him at the four. Mm -hmm. He's had a phenomenal rookie year. It's kind of gone under the radar because it's not Ja or Zion or Kendrick Nunn or something like, or, or guys like that. But off the bench, he's averaging 12 points, five rebounds, and assist on 37% shooting from three and 63% from the floor. That's good for That's a rookie. Great. That's, That's great. great. That's great. And he's not getting those starting player minutes either. Right. He's, he's getting those rotation minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they like to put him in with the first squad in those rotation minutes. They'll take out Jonas Valanciunas. Um, mm -hmm. They'll leave Jaron Jackson and put B. Clark in at the four, the three, and like you said with Anthony Tolliver. And uh, I love that Memphis Grizzlies team. It's it's sad to see their hopes pretty much get crushed. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll be back next year. I'm not really. They will. They're it. not going anywhere. Absolutely. Um, another injury that we got on the on the docket here. Another big man. Another surprising player. Or another you know big time player. Uh, Jonathan Isaac. Jonathan Isaac uh, for his ACL. One making a, a jump stop going in for a uh, going in for a layup and it's his second ACL injury on the same knee and it's it's just sad to it's it's sad to see this guy you know who's been solid in the limited minutes that he's played go down to another injury again it's mm -hmm. it's just bad luck and poor timing too especially this late into the season uh, with uncertainty into what next year is going to look like, he might just sit the entire year, and that's four years of his, three years of his career, like almost wasted. You know, it's yeah, and like you said, it's just really tough um, to watch any player kind of go down with that kind of mm -hmm. an injury. And he's Not one of the premier defensive players in the league, like yeah, in I mean, limited minutes, and now two ACL tears. It's it, funny it, because I was kind of going into this bubble hope. You, you know, it's hard not to think, oh, you know, it's so short. No one's going to get hurt. You know, everyone's going to be fine. It's going to mm -hmm. be quick. It's going to be, you know, everyone's going to be fine. And then, uh, you know, these two brutal knee injuries, season-ending near injuries, mm -hmm. you know, Jonathan Isaac, who knows if that's a career-ending injury at this point. I mean, tearing, right. uh, tearing that ACL twice, mm -hmm. bouncing back, you're not the same ball player. Right. Um, especially playing on a 
subpar team in, in the Orlando Magic. What's the development going to be like coming back? You mm-hmm. know, there's so many questions surrounding him and that team, and I feel bad. Um, I mean, then again, the Magic are kind of like we've said, like I've said, subpar. So mm-hmm. I mean, the team really well, they're up and they're you you can almost say they're up and coming with the the, the kind of moves that they've made because they've had they have Jonathan Isaac who is who's obviously really good, right? In the limited yeah. minutes that he's played, they have Aaron Gordon who's who does some things really well. They have um, they just, Vucevic, who is probably like thing. their trade chip, right? If things go south, like it's, all right, Vucci's has gone, right? And they've, they've picked the flyer on Markel Fultz and have made the most of it thus far. Yeah, I mean, I don't really trust in Fultz. I think the Magic do have to make a couple real key moves, maybe a mm-hmm. good signing. Um, they're definitely they're, – they're not a piece away. They're more than a piece away. I think they're right. like half of a team away from You know, maybe a decent. superstar likes this Orlando bubble a lot, and they'll be like, man, loved Orlando. Yeah, let's just go let's and go. play there all the time. Let's some do, Disney World. The let's Robin, do it. The, the, Lopez, the Lopez twins. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't take the Lopez twins, man. First of all, you got Brooke Lopez just kind of like hey. lugging down the field, hey. and then Robin hey. runs like this with his afro bobbing up, he's <laughs> going like this. And Robin makes I, threes now, though, which is uh, which is cool. I hate. The corner, I but. I really don't like that Milwaukee's <laughs> Buck, that Milwaukee Bucks basketball team. I really don't all like right. them. Last injury we got here is Ben Simmons' left knee injury. I don't think much is known because it happened today, Thursday, uh, Wednesday when we're recording this, right? Yeah. So. Well, Woj actually tweeted out said something about. About how um, the MRI came back clean and he's day to day. Okay. So I guess that's that, that, I mean that's that's very positive news for both Ben Simmons mm-hmm. and for so, this Philadelphia 76. Right. This is a dude that's had a foot injury in the past too, and you know we don't know what kind of effect you know that has you know long term on a guy that you know is taking the ball up at his size every every time right and a focal point of the offense like obviously we see lebron do it but we know that lebron spends you know a million dollars on his body so we'll see what uh what what comes of this for ben simmons but uh it speaking of like, the sixers you, you see shake milton and mb get into it on the sideline yeah, and then did you see shake milton say f that and just drain the buzzer beater he that don't team care. It, bro, he's like that Shit, that no, team like, is, is my team. That, bro, that team is so messed up. I, I love it. I, I love it. I think they hate each other, right? But I think they all Nobody on that team. I think they each all other. acknowledge that they have to win. I, I think that I think they're clicky. I think like the role players probably like each other. I don't know if Ben and Joel like the role players. Dude, right? I don't know anything about that um, basketball team. It's so right. bad. It's tough. It's tough, but yeah, I mean, Shake Milton with a with a cold blooded three point to win the game. Um, respect, nothing but respect. They stepped nothing into it too. They almost let him shoot the shot, and it's kind of like yeah, if if Shake Milton's going to take the shot to win the three, like that's probably oh, who you, you want me? to make. I I give I give him that every day. Yeah, of the week. Are you joking yeah. me? If it's if you break down and that's the dude who gets the ball, it's like ah, okay. If that's it like Brad Wanamaker taking that three at the top of the key. It's <laughs> like ah, all right. Shake Milton and Brad Wanamaker, but the. Uh, but that's Brad, okay. Brad Wanamaker is, the, is a beast. Yeah, the freaking 31-year-old rookie. Get out of here. Yeah, man. He's like, he's uh, he's like the, the dude in the, the, the Durham movie, uh, the Durham baseball movie. You know what I'm talking uh, about? Uh, no. Okay, never mind. It's like 40-year-old rookies, AAA. He pumps like 95 down like the highway <laughs> sign or something like that, and he gets signed to Durham. <laughs> the triple a team but uh that's oh, okay. irrelevant uh, right. so let's get into some uh some bubble accolades uh, a couple that we got here now in the short in the limited action um so we got mvp we got most surprising player most surprising team and then most disappointing player most disappointing team nick start me off with your bubble mvp you know it's i want it, it's been tj warren I mean, I know we talked a little bit about that. It, it's got to be TJ Warren, but you I don't also think... kind of can't sleep on James Harden. Right. James Harden's looked phenomenal in, like, the, in these limited games. He's looked great, and, and there's really nothing like – I mean, with him, it's all, oh, you know, how's he going to perform? How's he going to this? Is He he went – he dropped 49 against – well, th- th- that first game when they played – um. What's it called when they played Memphis? That they're not Memphis when they played Dallas in that OT game, which was a crazy game. He dropped forty nine. 
against uh, the Bucks when they beat the Bucks, he dropped 24. They played Portland uh, yesterday. They lost, but he dropped 23. I mean, he's impressive. You know, he's still able to shoot the ball, the lights out. But, I mean, you got to give it to T.J. Warren dropping, what, 50 on the Sixers? 53 against the Sixers, 34 against Washington, and 32 against Indiana. On ridiculous, like, efficiency, 9 of 12 from 3 against Philly, and then he went 1 of 6 against Washington, but 34 points, who cares? Uh, And then 4 of 5 against against, uh, Orlando, like, it's ridiculous. He's been he's, he's been the best player, and he's always throughout his career he's always been able to get a bucket. He's always been a mid range killer, but now he's able to shoot the three, and it's 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 not fair that T.J. Warren is the second coming of Michael Jordan. I'm just as long know, as he plays in Orlando and in a gym, it's it's it's, cr- it's crazy to think about. I mean, they have Depot playing, but Depot really isn't playing like Victor Oladipo. No, Depot. no, no, no. But why? Why would you need to play like it? Like you don't with Depot when TJ Warren's dropping fifty-three points and then thirty-four on back-to-back games. Like it's ridiculous. It's. I guess. It's, I guess they're playing decent, pretty decent defense too to keep, to stay in these games. Like yeah. it's Their their bench must be keeping them in the game too. Yeah. It's just it's impressive mm-hmm. that the Pacers are um, making not a run i mean they are but they're making an impression on the whole entire league i mean i think they're really the only ones that i've looked at it be like oh shit the pacers mm-hmm. you know yeah well um, I, I, I don't even know if if it's them or if it's just tj warren you know like i've seen yeah. more tj warren highlights in the past like three games than i have like in his entire six-year career right yeah and that's not disrespectful that's just honest i mean it's yeah true. It's true. It is. It's 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 insane the things that he's doing. Um, it's it's fun. I, so I mean, I, I, w- I mean, I have to, you have to give him the bubble, the bubble uh, MVP right now. But you also got to give him the most surprising player to him too. Yeah. I mean, how do you not? Yeah. Like I think. Else, like I don't know who else you give that to. Um, Honestly, like you're, I'm not surprised that you know Luca's balling out. Um, you know, you're not surprised when you see Giannis playing well. You're not mm-hmm. surprised when you saw AD play well. When when Harden plays well. Can I make my most surprising player Timothy Luau Cabrera? Oh my god! No, I can't. I can't do that. Can I make it Jason Tatum when he went two of fifth, two of like? You can make him the least surprising player because that's <laughs> like, that's what it might be. Most disappointing team. No, but uh, we can, yeah, we can, we can keep going here with the, with TJ Warren Love as the most surprising player. You know what? There, there's you really know nobody what? else. Gonna, there. You know what? I'm gonna give you a different most surprising. I'm gonna give you Kyle Lowry, right? You know, I was I was gonna make the Raptors my most surprising team. Okay. Because they definitely they're not surprising in the facts that they're good. They're surprising in the facts that they're this good. Yeah, I think it's I think Toronto is one of those teams where everyone's kind of looking at their roster. It's like when they. Everyone knows, like, Nick Nurse is a great coach. This team yeah. is good, right? And then your team plays them, and you're like, ah, we can probably stop Kyle Lowry. Uh, Pascal Siakam, we can put whoever on him, right? Yeah. And then we'll let everybody else beat us. Like, it's okay. And then everybody else beats you. And then Pascal Siakam also gets 25 points, and Kyle Lowry drops, like, a fucking 10-10-10 and 10 triple-double. I and mean, plays good he, defense and then takes charges and probably flops a little bit. When, when they played okay. against the Lakers, what was that, a couple nights ago? Mm-hmm. That was a scrappy game. He's mm-hmm. Kyle Lowry's taking his body and throwing yeah, it around. They drag you down to their level, right? They don't care what kind of team you are. If you play fast, you're going to play Toronto bat. You're going to play the way Toronto play, the way Toronto wants to play. They're They're surprising in the fact that – I mean, we talk about Nick Nurse. We talked about him last week. We talked about him. We, we talked about him the week before. Um, how is is the only thing I have to say to that that basketball team? It's just how. I mean, it's Pascal Siakam going from a role player to a rising star, and Kyle mm-hmm. Lowry still playing really well, and and Van Fleet has turned into a, a great six man or you know go to guy at the end of the game Mm -hmm. in the way the defense plays and the way that they play as a team it's just you lose Kawhi you lose uh uh Dre and not Dre Mark Green um Tandy (laughs) Green and like I they're the reigning champs for a reason they're playing like it too um 
I mean, if they keep playing like this all season, what what's the reason they can't go all the way again? Right. I mean, you can like you lock down the players. You know, I want to see how they can. Do they? I wonder if they play the Bucks. Do they play the Bucks? I gotta look at their schedule. Now. I don't know, but I'll give you another surprising player. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you Michael Porter Jr. Right, Michael Porter oh, Jr. Yes. Thirty against yes. the Spurs. Thirty and yes. fifteen against the Spurs. Five of nine from three. Eleven, nineteen from the floor. And then thirty the game before. Thirty-seven against the Thunder, who are good. And had and he also had twelve rebounds. Four of six from three. Twelve of sixteen from the floor. How talk do you to take me, this dude out? Talk to me How about this dude out? the Denver Nuggets. Talk to <laughs> me about him, please. <laughs> so Michael Porter Jr. has been one of the most surprising players in the bubble. Yes. Uh, so he's up there with TJ Warren and Kyle Lowry, right? I don't think anybody's surprised Kyle Lowry's good, but like you said, I think people are surprised that Kyle Lowry is like this type of player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Until they see yeah. Kyle Lowry. But uh, uh, Listen, I'm surprised Kyle Lowry's is good. I always thought Kyle Lowry was a little overrated. Um He's good, but I never thought he was that good. But okay, keep going. Sorry. No, I, 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 I mean, I've pretty much said everything I need to say. Like he's, he's a straight killer. Michael Porter Jr. Um, we we're talking. You were talking about him, and I talked about the Denver Nuggets before, and I'll talk about them again. The Denver Nuggets are a great basketball team. A ball ball is a balling. Okay, mm-hmm. we have Michael Porter Jr. who's balling, and if Michael Porter Jr. is playing the way he's he's playing right now, I mean. Skinny Jokic. I, I mean, I have I, I don't know what to say. Um, I, I was really high on this Denver team going into the um, going into the bubble, mm-hmm. so I'm not really too surprised that he's balling out. Um, but I mean, putting up what 30 points in the last two three games. Yeah, it, it's it, uh, it's 30 and 37. He went he went 30 uh, today. Um, and he went 32 days ago, or 37 two days ago. Like, he shot 55% from three yesterday or today, mm-hmm. and then he shot 66 two days ago. I mean, 100% free throw percentage, 12 boards, 15 boards with a block, two turnovers. I mean, I want Michael Porter Jr. on my basketball team. Right. He's, and you know, he's young, and he dated Madison Pettis. So that's – that's an up in my book. Which is really um, funny because I remember her on Disney Channel when we were young, and now she's like yep. out there in the world. Yep. She's only 22, so oh, not that up our alley. Um, okay. So what about most surprising team? You do you name drop the you name drop the 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 Raptors? Do you want to go into it a yeah. little bit more? Or? I mean, I, there's really not much to say about them that I haven't really said because we were talking about Carl Lauer and everything. I mean, the way the team plays. Um, it's surprising just to see that they continue doing – they not only continued it from last year to this year after losing two of their most important players, mm-hmm. but then going over a, what, three, four-month layover and still playing like this? I mean, it's it's just – it. they play really fun basketball. I mean, it's – they're in the East, and obviously, you know, I like the Celtics, you like the Nets, and it's tough to kind of root for or, or like watch those really good Eastern Conference teams. Yeah, well, the Nets are getting team. the Nets are getting stomped the mud hole right now by the by the Celtics. So uh, oh, yeah. we, you know, what, we had our fun. What, while really? What's the score? What's the score? They're, What's up, score? 16. They're up sixteen. They're up sixteen. They're up sixteen. Listen, dude, don't jinx it. Knock. I got to knock on wood. We got to. Um, we get. We got to. You know. So, so as much as like I hate like those fellow Eastern Conference teams. It's tough to hate the Raptors and not watch them play basketball. I mean, right. I was watching them play the Lakers, and I could not – listen, I could not take my eyes off that, that TV. I mean, they're, they're, the way they pass, uh, the way they play defense, the way they play offense, they're, they, they make that extra pass. They don't pass one too many. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone can shoot. I mean, there's always somebody on the, on the fast break. It's, it's not surprising because they weren't expected to be – you know, they weren't expected to be a top – uh, contending team, which is surprising to see if they just keep doing it after losing those two players. And it's just, I, I got, that's my Raptors take. Yeah. I think my most surprising team, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of teams that are playing like quality basketball in the bubble. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, like we said, like the offense is the offense is on another level. Um, but I, I think, I think the Raptors are up there as one of the most surprising teams right now. I think Orlando is really surprising. Uh, I don't know if they're the most surprising, 
but they're up there. Um, yeah, everyone thought they were going to get thrown around. It's a tough pick. I'm going to go. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to take a cop out answer. I'm going to take Portland as my most surprising team in the bubble. Right. Surprising, and if you look huh? at it, yeah. If you look at it, Portland has been good in years past when they've had Jokic and they've had Lillard and they've had McCollum and now they had Mello, right? And they have some additional pieces like Zach Collins in there, Mario Hazonia, who I don't think does anything productive for that basketball team, but at least he's no. you know, a warm body off the bench, right? At least he, you know, kind of looks good. Um, he looks like he could play basketball. Uh, so that's good. Um, but I don't think – I think a lot of people anticipated that they would be good when they got those guys back. But I think everybody just kind of was, like, muted about it. Where, like, Portland, ninth or 10th in the West, right? Everybody was on the Zion train. Everybody was on the New Orleans train. Everybody loves Memphis. And I think – it's interesting that they're kind of forgot about and then they get their guys back and they're like, Oh, they're good again. Especially after those guys were hurt, like pretty serious injuries where, you know, you're not sure how you're going to come back, especially after an abbreviated season under, you know, unforeseen circumstances. Um, I, I, I'm taking the cop out answer with Portland. Dame Lillard is, is an absolute stud. CJ McCollum, Uh, McCollum, you can make an argument. Can you please keep talking about the people and the teams that I bought? Please keep talking about it. Yes. You can, you can make an argument that CJ McCollum is one of the most surprising players in the league. Yes. uh, Yes. One of the most surprising players in the restart right now, but that's kind of, I feel like that's kind of a cop out too, because he's like an actually good NBA player. So like, I mean, yeah, but like really at the same time, he, I mean, he's a good NBA player. Yeah. But then you got to think he's never really, done that much i mean he puts up those numbers you know mm-hmm. he's always he's gonna give you 20 Second points fiddle, a game right. like right. fine um but he's never gonna kill you you know he's, mm-hmm. he's not gonna he, he, he won't beat you he won't kill you but he'll you know he'll put up the points it's it's dame who's gonna kill you right so it's 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 to see him when because i want when i i really watched that portland uh memphis game and you know he was all over he's all over the court he's bringing the ball up he's making the extra pass he's playing mm-hmm. defense um that Portland team is good. They are good. They're a good Portland team, and, and Nurkic looks really good. Mm-hmm. Nurkic looks very, they do. very good. They do. And what about uh, a? They're going to take the eight seed. I mean, there's yeah, no doubt in my are. mind that they're going to take. There's no doubt in my mind they're going to take the eight seed. Um, I watched the Pelicans play. Uh, I think when they played Memphis. Mm-hmm. I don't know, or, or whoever they played last. Um, they they had Zion in and he's just laboring down at the court. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's obviously out of shape. They only played him fifteen minutes and he was out of shape. Um I can't really get on the Pelicans train as much as I love BI. I love so BI. So can we can we say that the Pelicans are probably the most disappointing team? Because that's that's nice. We've got most disappointing player and team. I was gonna I'm, pick the I'm Pelicans. Between, I was gonna pick, pick the Pelicans the for my most disappointing team, right? My most and disappoint- it's disappointing okay. in the fact that I'm sorry to cut you off, but it's yeah, it's disappointing saying. in the in the fact that everybody kind of you know rode them a little bit, um, for lack of better words, mm-hmm. kind of was like up oh, here comes Zion, up uh, here's Brandon Ingram, up uh, they got Drew Holiday, Alonzo Ball, and JJ Reddick can shoot the ball. And, and then JJ when you put Redick all those things together, the, the playoffs in what nine right. years, yeah. twelve years, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but I think you look at that and you kind of mash them all together, and they kind of struggle as like a team, especially when it kind of gets like late. They kind of don't really have an offensive identity, and I don't know if that's just because like they don't play enough minutes together, mm-hmm. or if Brandon Ingram just tries to do too much, and he can absolutely do too much, right? Like he can absolutely be the difference maker for a team, right? I don't know if he's there yet, but you see like flashes, right? Like you see the flashes of of, of greatness, right? Uh, That he has. But as a young player, sometimes it doesn't, you don't know when to defer or you don't know when to, um, you know, try something else. Like a a, a dribble mid-range, you know, from the post fadeaway isn't going to work every single time. Yeah. Yeah. but they they have been disappointing where 
everybody kind of expected them to, to jump up, take that eighth seed, or at least get in the playoff game. And they've kind of been pretty lackluster, if, if you ask me. So my most disappointing team, um, it's got to be the Milwaukee Bucks. So Milwaukee Bucks are one and two uh, in, in the bubble right now. Okay. Uh, when they played the Celtics, they just be, they they just barely beat the Celtics. They were up maybe twenty points on the Celtics at one point, um, almost blew the lead. Well, mm-hmm. did and then got it back. Um, Giannis had eight fouls that game. I was counting them the whole time. He had eight fouls that game, and and the NBA refused to to give him that sixth foul, which was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> um, after punching Tyson in the gut, after elbowing Marcus Smart in the nose. Um, I don't want to talk about it. And then they just squeaked out with a, a seven-point win. Uh, the week after, they lose to Houston, 120-116. to 116. Mm-hmm. They had 23 turnovers that game. Houston only had six. So that's already not good. You already know their, de- their defense isn't there. L- uh, losing to the Nets last week. I mean, yeah. we, talk- we talked about how, of an- how much of an important game that was. But losing to the Nets, who are starting a bench, and uh, pick, Timothy Luau Cabarro, thank you. They are starting their bench. Um, <laughs> it's surprising to see Houston. Uh, I'm sorry. It's surprising to get see Milwaukee get off to the slow of a start. Um, well, Giannis I just don't really, think they're. I think they have their spot linked up. So. I don't know if they're not playing or if they don't care. I, I just don't think but, they but care. I, but, I, I but I think this not caring is – you can't not care because what happens? You, they're going to kick it on in three games? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, then again, they are missing Eric Blood, so that's really all they're missing. Um, but what, is everyone just not going to play defense and just kind of lollygag around? And what is – you think You think Budenholzer is just going to sit there? You think Budenholzer really is going to let them well, just Budenholzer, not play? Budenholzer has always been kind of like a really good has, – has always been a really good coach, right? but has always kind of stuck to his ways where he like doesn't adjust. And I think you have to, you know, adjust in, in certain situations. Um, but these guys, like, I, I think this will be the year like Budenholzer, you know, adjust. And like, I, I think he understands like, Hey, we got this locked up. Let's rest our guys. Let's, you know, play dudes that might not have gotten minutes in the regular season, see if they can contribute any way in the. Um... Okay. But that, that, uh, that, that's against the Brooklyn Nets, but that's not against the Houston Rockets. And that's not against the, the Boston Celtics. They didn't do right. That. Right. No, and, you're and, right. And they, they, they barely squeak out the Celtics win and they don't squeak out a Houston Rockets win. I mean, mm-hmm. the Houston Rockets, they're undersized. Milwaukee clearly has the size advantage, maybe not the shooting advantage. Well, even maybe no. I mean, not the shooting advantage, but still, they have the defensive advantage, they have the size advantage, and still not being able to squeak out that win is it, it's it's a little surprising for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna have to stick with Milwaukee. I think they bounce back. Obviously, it is the Milwaukee Bucks because Giannis Antetokounmpo in the league wants him to win a championship, so they'll, the <laughs> league will do whatever it takes to have a foreign-born player win. I I don't think so, but okay. That's that's my conspiracy. <laughs> Uh, all right. What about Lee? what about most disappointing player in the bubble? Do you have one? I mean, like I gotta go with Jason Tatum. So far, we talked. I talked a little bit about him before. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can't give you numbers. I can just give you the eyeball test and what I've seen from him. Uh, you know, he played real well. What he went two of. I got to look. I think it was 2 of 15 against the Bucks, and one of his passes, or I'm sorry, one of his two buckets was a tip-in by the Milwaukee Bucks, and he was the closest player. He was like 20 feet. He went like 2 of 15, and then he finally balls out against Portland, and then he kind of puts up like a measly 20 points uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's just been tough to watch him play basketball. Um we were really hoping as Celtics fans that he was just going to absolutely ball out and he was going to put the team on his back and just kind of go, you know, up and over, over the top and just do what he had to do, but he didn't. So I'm a little scared. Um, yeah. But, I mean, all, he's but if he's a good player, players. all good players bounce back. So that's, that's my hope. Right. You kind of expect him to, uh, to, to get back uh, to where he was. Um, 
I think uh, I I have to go with Ben Simmons, right? And I hate picking on the Celtics every single – or not picking on the Celtics, picking on the, the picking Sixers. Picking on the Sixers, picking on the Sixers. But he's he's looked uh, not great. Bad. Uh, bad. And he – like he. He doesn't take shots, right? Obviously, but he doesn't even like try. Yeah, it it it's not that he doesn't try. He just doesn't. I, not that he doesn't try to shoot the ball. Which, I mean, he does it. It's it's tough to talk about Ben Simmons because everybody understands like what kind of player this can be, right? This is a six foot nine or six foot ten point guard with the body of LeBron James, but the jump shot of like. You're thirty. You're you're fucking. You're you're thirty year war vet grandfather, right? Um, that's that's disrespectful to Ben Simmons. I'm sorry, but uh, um, <laughs> it's it's there's no willingness to take the shot, and I mean he's not scoring like at all in the in his last. Okay, so today at Washington, eight points. Against the Spurs, oh my God. eight points. Hey, he's bad. Against the Pacers, he had 19 on 8 of 14, 13 oh, rebounds. But 8 like, of 14. Probably all eight shots were layups probably, and dunks. Probably, yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's, it's just kind of strange to see him not defer, but like, I mean, 2 of 10 from the floor, 4 of 6 from the floor. Like, take It's disappointing because you want this dude to get more shots, right? Get him to the rim. You want mm-hmm. you can use Ben Simmons, right? Ben's the the Ben Simmons Joel Embiid pick and roll does not work. Joel Embiid is one of the worst pick and roll guys in the league. He sets terrible screens. That's a fact. Look it up. Um, but Ben Simmons is one of the better screeners in the league, right? But he's the only dude on that team that can handle the ball. Now that they got Shake Milton in there, so maybe a little bit of Shake Milton, Ben Simmons pick and roll opens Shake him up Milton. and kind of use. If you use him as the screener and the roller, I don't think he can be stopped. If you look at if you look at how if you look at how Golden State won their championships, right? Obviously their efficiency from three, right? And them changing the course of the, the NBA by like shooting many threes, right? And making them yeah, three. getting three and also the- having two yeah. and also having two of the best three point shooters in the league, right? Yep. Obviously You that, could argue three of the three of the best. Right. Um but then you go over to, to, to what they do well, too, and it's Draymond setting screens and rolling, right? Because you have to close on Steph Curry. So if Ben Simmons is in that Draymond role and Shake Milton is in the Curry role, I feel like that opens up opportunities for both of them. Because if, you set a, if you're Shake Milton, right, you are Shake Milton. Congratulations. Oh, um, God. Congratulations is right. Good, well, the, yay. Way, to hit that, way, to hit that, way to hit that buzzer beater. Way to get yelled at. Yeah, no Joe problem. Smith, that's, a, right? that, that's all I'll do. I'm not going to do anything right. next game, though. I so, promise you that. If you take the ball, right, and, you're, and you're, you, you call over Ben Simmons for the screen, right, they're probably going to follow Simmons down on the roll, right? That gives you a wide open three. Do you hit it all the time? Not at Steph Curry's rate. Right, but you're Shake Millen, mm-hmm. so you can make some threes, right? Yeah. Or they close out on you, and Ben Simmons is a freight train going towards the hoop, right? And that's nearly unstoppable. But they're just not doing that. He's like they don't. Try I, don't to I don't know what that team offense. is doing. I, don't, I think it's I think it's Brett Brown. I think it's more Brett Brown than it is Ben Simmons. But I'm gonna call Ben Simmons the most uh, disappointing player in the bubble thus far. Uh, and now it's, it's tough not to blame it on him. It's tough not to blame it on him. It's tough not to blame it on Embiid as a person mm-hmm. because you've seen, you know, we see flashes of their potential over right with the course of these past. And a lot of those guys years. have to it's like, come on. You got you got to give Joel Embiid his right. You got to give Ben Simmons his, and it's tough to distribute that, especially when you have Tobias Harris there too. He's got to get his. So someone's got to go. So probably yeah, probably yeah. But that's a conversation for a different time. Um, we did most disappointing team, so I think that leads us to our last segment here. We're running a little Oh, uh, Sporkle, Sporkle, so Sporkle, 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 Sporkle. That's top one. We're gonna do some trivia, Nick. We're Let's go. You know when you can see my screen. I can see your screen. Okay. NBA triple doubles. 
we are doing can you name the NBA players who have recorded multiple triple doubles from 2009 to 2000 from 2009 2010 season to 2018 2019 season uh and it gives us the teams that they recorded them for wow the number oh my 137 60, oh seconds. my lord take a are guess at that one uh, i will it's russell westbrook okay Okay, so 57, Miami, Cleveland, and the Lakers, and it's LeBron James. LeBron James. Then is James Harden. James Harden. Harden. Boston and Sacramento. Is it Rajon? It is Rondo. Wow. Good shout. Okay. Denver with 28. Uh, Mellow, no. AI, no. It's not Carmelo Anthony, no. It's not Allen Iverson. I don't think Allen Iverson's getting 10 rebounds ever. Um, that's a tough one. We'll skip that one. Golden State, 22. Is it Draymond Green? It is Draymond Green. Draymond. 22 for Philly. That's Ben Simmons, who we just talked about. Still can get triple doubles. 22. Orlando, Orlando Phoenix, Phoenix, and the Pelicans. the Pelicans. Check this shit out. Alfred Payton. Alfred? <laughs> Dollar Store, Ben Simmons. Uh, Milwaukee is probably Giannis. Have fun. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm learning now. I'm learning. Siakam? Toronto. No, it's Lowry? Kyle Lowry. DeMar DeRozan? No, it's Kyle Lowry. Lowry. OKC and Golden State. Oh, Kevin Durant? Uh, duh. Come on. Took you. <laughs> duh. Uh. The Clippers and Detroit. That's Blake Griffin, who I think should be used as more like Ben Simmons, but conversation for a different Blake, time. Blake Griffin's good. Yeah, I don't know if his knees Portland are going to hold up, and though. and Charlotte. Uh Charlotte. <laughs> you like that? Nick Batum? Nick Batum. Nick Batum. Triple doubles. That's why he got paid. Sacramento, Sacramento and, and New Orleans Pelicans. Is that also Rondo? No. Uh, <laughs> Sacramento and New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, oh, it's probably Boogie. Yeah. Dallas. Oh, is yeah. The market. No, it's Dirt. Don, no. Don Chich. Golden State Warriors. Curry. Lakers, Chicago, Laker, Chicago and the Spurs. Lakers, Chicago, and the Spurs. Lakers, Chicago, and the Spurs. That's a tough one. Who went from Chicago to the Spurs? Boris Dio. Dio. Oh, my Bor- <laughs> Boris. Just put Boris. Boris? No, it's not Boris. Dio. Um, <laughs> oh, is it Pau Gasol? No. It was yes! Pau Gasol. Good shout. He, he got a triple-double for the Spurs. Good for him. I've um, Chicago. It's probably Derek Rose. Whoa. Derek Rose? No? Is it... If it's Joakim Noah, I'll jump off. Okay. Uh, Washington is probably John Wall. Uh, the Lakers and the Pelicans. I went from the Lakers to the Pelicans. Lonzo? No. Football. Yeah. Oh, he's got two up there, but just for the Lakers. Oh, check this out. Julius Randle. Julius <laughs> Randle. Uh, Phoenix, Phoenix to Milwaukee. Milwaukee. That's uh, Bledsoe. Equals Bledsoe. Correct. Equals Bledsoe. It's an Excel equation. Uh, Los Angeles Lakers, five. Uh, it's Kuzma? No. Is it R.I.P. Kobe? Five. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, Kobe Bryant, yeah. Philly with five is it indeed. No, he's over there, though. Philly with five. Philly, 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 Philly. You think it's Michael Carter Williams? Oh God, I really hope not. Wow. I really, that's that's so wow. bad. That Philly is so and, bad. Philly and Denver. You know who's also gonna be on this? Jokic somewhere. Oh, he's up there for Denver. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh Philly. Who went from Philly to Denver? It's not Iverson. It's Andre Iguodala. Oh, Andre Iguodala. Wow. You Respect like that? You for like spelling that, that name. Yeah. Respect. Uh, the Hornets to Clippers to Houston. That's Chris Paul. Uh, Minnesota. You think Carl Anthony Towns has one? It's got to wow. be. Not, not Towns. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Andrew Wiggins? No. I think it's Rubio. Yeah, it is Rudy yeah. Rubio. Indiana, probably Paul. Paul George? 
Oh, I can't spell. He's over there. Uh, is Oladipo? He's down there. Is it Miles Turner? Is it Lance Stevenson? Steve Stevenson. Yeah. Uh, uh, Boston, Boston Port and Portland. And who went from who went Boston from to Portland, Boston? Nick? Who went from Boston to Portland? We have a minute. Uh, who went from Boston to Portland? We have 59 seconds, and we got less than half. Or we got a little bit more than half. We're struggling. Uh, all right, Dallas, uh, Dallas, rapid fire, four. I think it's Dirk. Dirk, no. No, it's Ski. It might be Steve Nash. No. Okay, Boston, Kid. you could just ah, – Boston. Boston, you could just throw Paul Pierce. You could throw KG. P-E-R-R-E. Nice. Miami, yeah. Wade. I can't hey, spell. Wade. Oh my lord! No. Uh, wow. Hello, Bide. What's up down there? Um, Washington, Boston. Isaiah Thomas. Who? No. No way. Uh, oh, Jeff Green. Jeff Green. Jeff Green. No way. No. No. Jeff Green does not get triple doubles. Uh, I think we're. Uh, I New York we're, Knicks. I think we're. Uh, Toronto. I think we're, I you think tried. Kyle, you tried DeRozan. Yeah, no, if no. I spelled it right. Okay, so oh, I went back. You Whoops. went back. Uh, I, I pressed escape too many times. Uh, we're just gonna uh, play quiz, and we got thirty-two. Uh, quiz pause. Uh, resume. Oh my uh, lord. Okay, where's the give up? Uh, button? Oh no. Where's the give up button? Give up. Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. So Paul right. Pe- Hassan Whiteside has four triple doubles. Oh, Evan Turner, Jimmy Butler. Kemba's oh, down oh. here for Charlotte. Ty- Tyreek Evans. Josh Smith, Oladipo, Dennis Smith. Yeah, so there are some names up, Greg. I think Greg Monroe has come up in every single uh, Sporkle quiz that we've done so far. So Greg Monroe is – I'm just going to start typing in Greg Monroe. Just You might as well just start throwing Greg Monroe in there at this yeah. point. I mean – Yeah. Reggie you know, Jackson. Jared Jack up here, I watched that game that Jared Jack had a triple-double for the Knicks. It was a fun game. It was a I fun game. They lost. I think they lost. <clears throat> I bet. As it as it as it was, um, Brad Beal, Steve Blake. There's you know I like doing these Steve because there are some Blake. names. Raymond Felton. Yeah, there are some names on these that you forget like played in the league. Dylan. We got Wright. Mark Gasol down here that we that we forgot. Well, no, we Dylan took Wright Gasol had... and we took oh, Gasol. We got, and we got Pow. We got Pow and Mark. Oh, okay. Um, we didn't get Evan Turner for Boston and Toronto, uh, Boston and Portland. Ooh, okay. And James Buckets. You know, I think David Lee has also shown up in every single quiz that we've done so far. So yeah, for the Warriors, if we're gonna yeah, make a first Warriors, team, we're... if we make a first team all quiz team, it's going to be um, Greg David Monroe Lee at center and... and and David Lee at the power forward. Yes. And then we can probably go from there. Giannis has been in every single one too, so we're gonna have a, a super sized team that probably can't shoot. So we we should start getting some <laughs> shooters on here. Go ahead, triple double watch though. <laughs> yeah, triple doubles triple though. Double Everyone's getting a triple double. Um. All right, oh, so let's I think go. That's, Celtics up twenty, baby. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. I, I don't want to. We beat the Bucks. I don't want to hear it. Um. So I think that's uh, I think that's all the yeah, time yeah. we got. If you're gonna start <laughs> bloating about the uh, no, I'm not the be- Celtics. I'm not because guess what? It don't matter. Yeah. And then right, they're gonna pull so... some crap on me next week or next <laughs> game. So you know. Probably. All right. So thank you for listening. If you can go to your podcast app of choice and you can rate, review, give us comments. Let us know. How More importantly, doing. follow us on yeah. social media. Hit us up on Instagram, Caps on Sports, uh, Twitter, Caps on Sports. Uh, me, Nick underscore Tobias, Mano, Anthony J. Mano, Anthony no, that's Mano, my Instagram. Burner of Anthony. At Burner of Anthony. At Burner of Anthony. Something. Uh, we're here. We out here. Uh, I'm starting to tweet more just because I guess why not, but it's all sports tweets. Uh, Instagram, we talk about that. Uh, gang. I think that's all the time we got, Nick. Say goodbye to the folks. See you later, folks. Peace.